Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. The title of the show is called When You Call When You Call Me That Smile. Um that quote is from this book called The Virginian. Um The Virginian also gave us one of the iconic Western quotations when you call me that smile. Commonly mis- misquoted as smile when you call me that. Um the classic 1929 film based on the novel popularized a different version of the smile line. In that film, Gary Cooper stars as the Virginian. His confrontation with Trampus, played by Walter Houston, occurs at the saloon's bar instead of a poker table. When Houston calls Cooper a long-legged son of a... Cooper cuts him off in mid-epithet and says, if you want to call me that, smile. He says that with a gun pointed at his um, belly. There are a lot of Captain America Negroes, militant integrationists, and black power Americans who say the word nationalist as if it is a slur. Um, Marcus Garvey was a nationalist. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a nationalist. El Haj Malik El Shabazz Malcolm X was a nationalist. Kwame Nkrumah was a nationalist. Khalid Abdul Muhammad was a nationalist. Dr. John Henry Clark was a nationalist. Professor Amos N. Wilson was a nationalist. Henry McNeil Turner, Martin Delaney, Henry Highland Garnett, Edward Wilmart Blyden, Paul Cuffey, and France Fanon were all nationalists. So when you say that word nationalist, you low-frequency, mouth-breathing, ignorant, clueless-ass Negro, you better smile. And on that note, I'm going to bring in our brother, good brother, Minister the Wu. Peace, my brother. How you doing, doing brother? Um, oh, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm relaxed. So oh, sounds like it. <laughs> had me had me some stewed chicken and some rice and peas and cabbage and plantains on the side. Nice ice cold beer. So I'm straight. <laughs> oh, <I hear you. laughs> But um, you know, traps are going through, and uh, oh really? Got my, yeah, I got a chance to go to that show, and everything was cool. So finally made it back to my lady's um aunt's house in Queens, and mm-hmm. you know, I saw that she posted this. I was like, I can't wait for this. Oh yeah, yeah, because you know, I think people are going to get a whole lot different response than what they used to. Do you remember when they came out back in the days when consciousness was running high and somebody came out with the term hater? Mm-hmm. And then everybody backed up because, you know, people are more concerned about being popular and being cool than they are about being right and standing right. on principles. Right. So the moment that became like a, a an end thing, hating, then, you know, everybody backed up because, you know, you don't want to be called a hater. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to get a little bit of a different response um, from this set, this demographic of nationalists is out today, because I believe that we're on the offensive and we're on the attack. And if you come at us with this BS and this nonsense, we are going to tear your ass out the frame. It's not going to be mm-hmm. no backing up. It's not going to be no allowing you to say whatever the hell you want to say and go unchallenged. You're going to stomp out your talking points in broad daylight in front of everybody so that everybody can see how you got destroyed. So it's very important that people know that. We're not backing up. We're going forward. Yes, sir. Now, how did, let me ask you a question. How did it get to the point that nationalist is a slur? Like, they're trying to group nationalists. They're trying to do the nationalists what they did to Hotep. 
Right, exactly. Exactly. You know, my answer, okay, baby girl, you're going to have to, thank you. I'm sorry, I got my cutie sitting on my lap here. My little, mm-hmm. little cheeks. Um, okay, so for me, brother, uh, first off, you know, I, I'd be trying my hardest to correct people when they try to use hotep as a slur because hotep really is a beautiful word. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for you to be using it as a slur and say those, those hoteppers, these hotep Negroes, and to me, what happens is that what I saw, I don't want to go too far into it, but what I saw is it was a it, hotepper, hotep being a slur originally came from a lot of, I want to say, non-conscious sisters being hit on by conscious community brothers, and they started calling them hoteppers. I started seeing that. And mm-hmm. once that happened, the people who were in the conscious community, when they wanted to use it to offend somebody else, I think that a lot of times, man, we forget like how far a joke went or how far a word went. Don't don't really remember where the origins come from, and don't even realize why we're saying what we're saying. So in that same vein, I think that it's kind of a little bit different with the nationalist situation. With the nationalist situation, from what I've seen, so many people, brother, this is my this is my honest opinion. So many people don't understand what a nationalist is. That it's mm-hmm. okay for them to make it a slur. I'll give you a for instance. Like I was talking to somebody this weekend, two very intelligent sisters that I really respect. And in the, t- the context of or in, 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 in the confines of the conversation, one of the sisters said, well, you know, um, basically the Caucasian has colonized Africa, so Africa's off the table. I raised my hand. I said, wait a minute. Africa's off the table? Who, who said that? Who, who established that? And she was like, well, you know, they basically control it, so it's off the table so maybe we should build in Haiti and this and the next thing. So then the other sister was saying that she defines nationalism as, you know, she she started coming up with a lot of these vague um, generalizations like being a community or, or, or having community, loving your brother and your sister. I said, no, 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 no. I said, <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion of being a nationalist, but that is not what a nationalist is. A nationalist is a person who wants to build and control their own context outside of the control of their oppressor. And when I said that, the beautiful thing about it was she automatically agreed. So I really think, get down, girl. I really think that we need to go, I mean, I I do believe that we need to go on an aggressive clap back to those who are trying to make it a slur, but I also think we need to really go on a mass education of what a nationalist is. Because, brother, man, I just think a lot of people don't, don't remember what it means. Do you agree? I agree. I mean, it's always, to me, it's all about ignorance. Right. It's, it's really all about ignorance. And it, that's why it takes such profound patience on the side, on a, you know, on the um, side of people who's actually trying to put out information and enlighten people. Um, because what I find is that people just don't listen. They don't pay attention. Right. They're, it's real ADD. It's like there are people that have been on my profile on Facebook for years and then I'll get the, they'll send me a message saying, yo brother, uh, where's your YouTube channel? <laughs> it's like, it, it's the kind of stuff that makes you want to bang your head against the wall. It's like, are mm-hmm. you serious? I mean, yes, me of all people, every time I post, every post I have has links to the BAIO mm-hmm. and links to my YouTube, links to all my social media. How is it possible that I can post a video, you listen to the video, and then ask me, where can I get more of this? Right. Right. You know, it, yep. it takes a tremendous amount of patience to deal with our people, man. You know, it, is, it just comes with the territory. <laughs> and as much as I dislike it and as much as I, I, I can't stand it, I am patient. I hate that I am. Yes. But I am. <laughs> you know, I know that I am. If I wasn't, there's no way in the world I would be able to do what I'm doing. Without a doubt. But to get back to the the topic, um, one of the things that I definitely wanted to talk about um, is nationalists. What is a nationalist? And we kind of briefly touched on it. Um, Yeah, let let me give my shot at it. Please do. A nationalist is a person, well, the first, you know, I always look at the root of words. What's the root mm-hmm. word of nationalist? Nation. Nation. Exactly. 
So a nationalist is concerned about nation. Um, mm-hmm. A nationalist is concerned with social, economic, and political control over the context of their reality. Mm-hmm. A nationalist, and this is this is another thing that um, I found that a lot of people think that nationalists and separatists are the same thing. Right. Right. Nationalists and separatists are not the same thing. A nationalist Mm -hmm. wants to have uh, control over the context of their um, reality, but the general philosophy when it comes to um, commerce and trade is produce it yourself, sell to everyone. Right. You know, (laughs) it's not just Mm -hmm. produce it yourself and then only sell to yourself because that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You produce it to yourself. And then you sell it to the world, sell it to everyone mm-hmm. that will buy it, no matter mm-hmm. what color they are, because you're going to reap the right. benefits of that. Right. So to me, that's what a nationalist is, social, economic, and political control. A nationalist is also another aspect of it that I learned from Malcolm and, and Amos. A nationalist is always looking at things from their group's perspective. Right. They're not really universal in their thinking. When it comes to right. like, oh, well, how can so and so else benefit? No, it's how can my people? What are my people getting out of this deal? Mm-hmm. And if you notice, yeah. almost all of us, all of us think that way within the BAIO. Right. How we, you right. know, like every time we look at an issue, we look at the issue and says, well, how does this issue affect us as a people? Right. So that to Indeed. me is what a national is. Uh. No, I must preface this by saying this, and I really don't care what people think about what I'm about to say, but a lot of my, uh, I want to say last three, four years of understanding what a nationalist is has really been shaped by the thoughts and ideas bounced off by the group I'm in, which is the BAIO, being you, um, Kala, you know, Neil, man, Neil, dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of my, uh, you know what I'm saying, my, 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 my thought about what a nationalist evolved, you know what I'm saying, because I had my idea what a nationalist was, and I had my little understanding of it, and as I began to bounce that around everybody, it, it just, you know, it tripled and doubled and quadrupled. So my mm-hmm. idea of a nationalist, first off, just like you, is a person that wants a nation. That, to me, is the most bugged out thing about these people that we're fighting against. How in the world can you be a nationalist and you don't want a nation? And, you know, when you say you want a nation within a nation, to me that's not a nation because it's not you controlling infrastructure. And if you don't have the, 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 the trifecta being land infrastructure and nationhood, keyword being infrastructure, then you don't have a nation. So to me, a nationalist is, first of all, a person that wants a nation. It's, second of all, a person that wants a nation for people that looks like him. And looks like her. And third of all, a nationalist is a person that is always thinking about the benefit and the development, the development of the kind of people who would build that nation. That's that's my near and dear definition of being a nationalist. That's the part I love the most. A nationalist mm-hmm. is a person who is always thinking about the development of the people who are going to build and maintain that nation. So in other words, if you're a black nationalist, you're thinking about acquiring land, but you're also thinking about how do I train the people who's going to cultivate and, and, and uh, what's called maintain that land. Nobody wants to uh, acquire land and then lose it. Nobody wants to acquire land and give it away. So if you're a true nationalist, if, let's just say, for instance, we say, okay, we're putting together a school, all right? And this is no shot at nobody, so don't nobody out there read into this. My idea of building a national school is building a school where we're raising young brothers and sisters who are going to grow up and contribute to building a nation. Not brothers and sisters who are just going to be cultured, not brothers and sisters who are just going to learn a specific language, learn some deities, or learn how to research information. But brothers and sisters who say, you, you are learning to, uh, you know what I'm saying, run the power grid. You, you learning to run the sewage. You, you learning, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's say mm-hmm. brothers and sisters who are going to be able to, uh, what you call it? Let's say brothers and sisters who are going to be able to, to realize our dreams that we have. See, my problem with black, uh, black movements and black power movements is, is that we say that we're nationalists, 
And we even say that we want to acquire land, and we may even be, like, trying to gather people together to acquire land. But a lot of the black, almost all black power groups that we know exist today do not home grow talent that will eventually build a nation that they're talking about having. They just want to collect enough money to, quote, unquote, buy it. And to me, the fundamental problem is, is that some people do buy the land or some people get the land, but you have not uh, trained and developed enough brothers and sisters to uh, to run it and to advance it so you'll have it, and then three years later, you won't have it. There's been leaders inside the Muslim faith, and I'm talking about the black Muslim faith, who have had gas stations, they lost them all. Restaurants, they lost them all. Hotels, you know what I'm saying, brother? Anything you can think of, like buildings, uh, drug houses, the, 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 the desolation and loss of second-generation leaders of property, land, and acquisition of businesses. It just You would have no idea how profound the loss is. And it's not necessarily that that leader was not charismatic and couldn't speak. It's that they did not take and use their, their infrastructure that they had to raise and develop brothers and sisters to uh, maintain as well as advance what they was acquiring. So at the end of the day, people leave because in all nations, you know what I'm saying, all movements, people come and people go. And when the, the key people who was running that left, everything just goes by the wayside. It disappears or we lose it. To me, the key part of being a nationalist is, number one, having a nation. But what's near and dear to me is always thinking about how to develop people to run that nation that you're thinking about. I hope that wasn't too long-winded. 